Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna do an Imperial Red Ale recipe build. And I've got Jenny here with me because it's a nice day out. I wanted to, honestly, I just wanted to drink the beer. She was like, well, I have to talk about making beer. And I was like, does that mean I get to drink beer? And she was like, after we talk about it. Okay. <laughs> kind of how that went. Because <laughs> Anything she's about to talk about, it's all gonna be new to me. So we can learn together. But I don't have a beer in my hand. Shouldn't we have that if we're talking about beer? The Oktoberfest is kicked. Not my doing. What else do you have that I can go up there and steal? I have some pills in the fridge. Like in cans? Yeah. Would you like one? Yeah. Are they labeled? I'll grab them. I know where they are. Well, while we're doing that, how's your day? Happy Sunday. I'm done. Watch it when you open it, they've been spurting. Yep. In my hands. Take we're gonna, two. We're gonna talk about beer. I'm sorry that I feel like the rule is you have to be drinking it while you're talking about it. This is really why I wanted to come hang out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so Jenny, this is how I do it. All of it. This is how we brew it. This is how we brew it with the hops and malt and barley. This is how we <laughs> brew it. Sunday afternoon, the weather's right, and we're drinking, not fighting. The beer tastes good, and it's real cold. I'm done. Not gonna drink out of 40s, gonna drink a can. When you, I drink it, know, I'm a woman. I am not a man. That has been my song, like, since the early 2000s. Drink another because I'm faded. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> we're in Brew Father. Um, so, okay, so this is actually why I invited you here is to name the beer. It is an Imperial oh. Red Ale, so you sit on that. I'm not going to name it yet. Um, I'm going to change my equipment profile to... Actually, I'm going to leave it Grain Father because I'm going to brew it inside tomorrow. Um, and batch volume is going to be 5.5 gallons. What time are you brewing tomorrow? Early. I'm going to prep it tonight. How early? Nine. If I hear you, do I get to come play? Yeah. Yeah, please. I haven't gotten to do a brew day upstairs, I think, ever. I'm just like helping you build. It's quite warm. It's quite warm. I have a fan, though. You know how we stay cool? Beer? Beer! <laughs> Breakfast beer! <laughs> oh, God. Um... Okay, so I'm just going to leave my efficiency at 72%. Batch volume, 5.5 gallons. Oh, i got to make sure there's no sparge. Sparge water limit, max point of one. All right, and style is Imperial, Imperial red. red. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. This is one of those, like, I think I know what I'm talking about, or I've just lied to a whole lot of customers when I've been working. Probably both. The word in <laughs> She's not lying. But I sound really convincing when I pretend like I know what I'm talking about. When you say Imperial, whether it's an Imperial Stout, an Imperial IPA, an Imperial Red, whatever, you're really actually talking about the alcohol content, correct? Yeah. Is there it's something like else that contributes to that? Or is it just, if you, act, like, I mean, because you can have an accidental Imperial kind of, right? Like, if you accidentally yeah. end up with a higher alcohol, you didn't intentionally brew. Here, I'm like, gonna, a double, you I'm gonna specifically look this up doubled. because I've been, like, talking out of my ass lately on my channel. Well, and okay, while you do that, will you do the... Imperial IPA versus double IPA because double IPA I've always interpreted as the hop content. What does Imperial? I just googled what does Imperial mean as if that was going to give me a result. Imperial Court. Google, get in my brain. Yeah, Google does that sometimes. Have you ever done the. Imperial means stronger than usual. And does double <laughs> actually just mean more hops? No, double means double, like more alcohol. I think, it, I think it's. But doubles are also higher hops. Imperials aren't always higher hops. Like a, an imperial stout is not always going to be higher, like a super hoppy stout or anything like that. What's the difference between an imperial and a double IPA? Double IPA is also called imperial IPAs. This is a unique American style. Takes the craving for hops and runs with it. These usually use double or even triple the typical amount of hops, but also add more malts to balance. The resulting beer is huge, highly hoppy. So I think imperial can just for apply an IPA to can most. Be both. Yeah. It, so so it's one of those things where. Uh, double doesn't necessarily mean imperial, but imperial, imperial means or, or double will always be imperial, but imperial won't necessarily be double because of the hot. That sounds like the result of when you double the hops mm -hmm. and the malts, 
that by doing that, yeah. by doubling it or increasing it, you're automatically increasing the alcohol, which is the byproduct of that is making it an imperial, or you can just choose to change your recipes on reds or stouts to make it an imperial. Yeah, basically. Of course, this imperial is typically just a stronger Look at version. all this learning. I know. That's why I also invited you here. I invited you for many reasons. She invited me because she really likes me. That too. I'm amusing sometimes. Okay, so... Now let's look at what an Imperial Red Ale is. So, um, the SRM should be, actually it says them. The SRM should be between 10 and 17. Wait, this is based question. on the, hold on, this is based on the um, Brewers Association definition of what an Imperial Red is. My question before we get to Imperial Red, what makes a red different than an amber or a brown? Um, I think red is actually an amber. I was just doing some research. What makes and amber different than a brown or a lot? Is do you toast the malt? Or I believe ambers and browns are different. Uh, in my experience, browns typically are more like on the verge of like a porter, so it's more of a brown color. Versus like ambers can be more of a caramelly gold or up to like a red. Well, and that's color. based on the color though. Is do the ingredients chip from like a, if I'm gonna do a regular like a, a any of the ales that you've done that are not yeah. browns or ambers or reds, a traditional ale that comes out, you know, they come out, whether it's an IPA or something else that comes out the kind of between straw and yeah. honey and whatever. So we're going to add a lot of caramel malts to it. Which so is it the malt it the itself red, that changes yeah, the color? The, it, yeah, it's always the malt that changes the so color. So that actually makes more sense because I've always considered, I feel like with reds and ambers and browns, they, they also run the gamut. Like I prefer the ones that tend to have more of the malty stuff up front, but if I'm going to drink a really hoppy beer, I don't like it necessarily to be... A red or an amber, but pe there are people that do prefer you know, that style. You know, I think I like uh, imperial red so much is because they're highly hopped. They, right. Well, that's the thing. So I, yeah, I, they're I, also I like a very bit. balanced. So they're. I think I this I gravitate one, towards this them. Tickles me. I look forward to tasting this one. Yeah, I'm excited. I've never made one. Um, I I think I I tend to like it more because I I like a sweeter beer when it's hoppy. Yeah. So like I don't me love too. a dry IPA. Me too. Um, we just but that. reds typically are on the sweeter side because there's so much malt and like there's the caramel malts are sweeter kind of malt typically. Do they actually have that car? Is that where the caramel flavor actually comes from? Is a bit, malt? yeah. So uh, the way they make caramel malts is they um, they they basically instead of just kilning them, they'll roast them as well. So uh, it it brings out a different kind of sugar. You don't have to put them in your mash. You can actually just steep them and use them for flavor. Interesting, because the germination process has already happened and then it's cooked versus um, a kilned hop or a kilned malt would typically not be heated enough to cook the malt. So technically you could accidentally do a red when you were going to do an amber if you just over malted it. I think they're pretty similar. I don't th I don't think there's a, a sharp uh, definition because You're ambers just... and reds are both California like they were made in California and I think they're I think you're just going for like one you're you're intentionally making it a red color okay. and then the other it's like it can be amber but a, a range of um, I feel like those are beers that were like oopsie beers back in the day like oh, somebody like, was trying to do something and all they had was caramel hops and they yeah. like said screw it we're just gonna throw that in they were like look an amber I made a beer I do love a good amber too I, you know, I used to drink a ton of ambers and reds, and I don't find myself drinking nearly enough anymore. Because you, you're you you're so motivated to perfect, like you've done so much with ideas, yeah. you've done so much with the sours and things like that, that yeah. your fans it's, demand it. Guys, you gotta demand the ambers and the reds. Also, like, they, I feel like a lot of people don't distribute reds. Um, we always get asked for it at the bar. Yeah, yeah, because you're typically more likely to find it at a bar or at a brewery. Um, but I don't think it's something that people like to distribute because I don't think they think that there's as much demand for it as, say, an IPA. Do they age faster, too, in the keg? Like, is there because there's so. a higher sugar content? Do you think they, no. they go bad faster? No. Technically, a higher sugar content should make it go bad slower. Oh, really? I guess that kind of makes sense. Yeah, because, like, think about jam. It's yeah, preserved that makes sense. with sugar. I don't know. Whenever we have an amber on draft, it flies. The browns and the reds go a little bit slower, yeah. but the, if we have an amber on draft, it just People love them. Yeah, it's Not enough people make them. Especially in the fall. Like we this mm -hmm. this time of year, we don't have one on right now. We have an Oktoberfest, but it's like a real Oktoberfest, not like a American seasonal beer, like an October beer, which we which when you made your Oktoberfest, we were talking about that. That like yeah. the real Oktoberfest shouldn't taste like Starbucks. 
Um, so we have one of those that's really the Hoffenbrau. It's freaking phenomenal. Yeah, that sounds um, good. Oh my god, it's so good. But if I wasn't yeah. a, super afraid of going anywhere, I know I really I would come see me. Come today. visit. It's outdoors. <laughs> it doesn't help. <laughs> I'm just agoraphobic. I know. I asked you to go to brunch. You said no. That's why we're doing this instead. Oh yeah, brunch. Absolutely not. Um. <laughs> No, my agoraphobia has gone through the roof since COVID, so... Uh, right? Well, that's a little more rational than just agoraphobic. Yeah. It's a good excuse, anyway. That's, that's rational-phobic. Um, all right. Endemophobic. So, <laughs> all right. So, an American Imperial Red Ale, um, the use of American hops in the American Red Ale lends to the perception of medium hop bitterness, flavor, and aroma. I think that red ales are typically really hoppy. I think it just kind of depends on what you want to do with it. Um, there's a solid malt profile and the be beer should be balanced between hot bitterness and malt sweetness. And... Are reds also... I feel like there's some... Are they like Irish also? Is there there's an Irish red. Like is, Killian's is an Irish red. Is it... Because it's... I don't know how they're different. I haven't gone that far into I'm my research. Having a, I'm having a hard time even remembering flavor wise. I don't think there is hoppy. Okay. It's more, it's it. You know, it seems. Then we'll have to buy that and do it a side by side with when you when we taste this one. I haven't had like a Killian since college, but <laughs> I vaguely remember it being more of a lager kind of vibe. Hmm. Yeah. When we do this one, we'll have to. Maybe we'll go to go to the liquor store or something and just get like a couple. Especially if like you're saying you used to drink a lot of reds, and yeah. I I don't feel like I have that. Deep I actually of a might have a red upstairs. I have like a bunch of random beers that have been sent to me. And well, I, gotta look I, I think that'll be fun. We, we should do more it. blind tasting. All right. So according to the Brewers Association, um, an imperial red should have a deep amber or dark copperish reddish brown. Chill haze is as chill haze is acceptable. Um, medium to high caramel malt character, which we're definitely going to do that. I think I have some 120 that we're going to put in it. Um, the hop aroma and flavor should be high, uh, but balanced, and the bitterness is very high, and then obviously very high alcohol is a hallmark, and yeah. Red IPAs are a thing too, right? So that's just yes. more more and more and more and more hops? Like there's it's a just like, like an somewhere. extra hopped red. Right, so they, like yeah. somebody just makes it, the brewer has you to make can, a decision whether to call it an imperial red or call it a red IPA. any style in IPA if you just say put that it there's the can. more hops. Literally just put it on the can. I am I just remembered because I looked at my past order on more beer that um, I got stuff to make a rye IPA. I love rye IPAs. Me too. Weren't you doing a creamsicle IPA too at some point? Or milkshake IPA? That's happening now. I got to transfer it. Mm. Um, that We'll try that next week. Mmm. Okay, so um, I think we kind of got the idea. And a red ale is, it's, I think it's a pretty new style. So, like, there's not a ton of history that we need to get into that you guys are going to yell at me about. Uh, <laughs> if there is history, you can kindly type it, not in caps. So we're going to do our fermentables first. Also, don't forget, you got to come up with a name for this. Oh, well, I think, I, don't I get to taste it first? Nope. It's going to taste like a red ale. <laughs> fire crotch. Ooh, I like that. A spicy fire crotch. Spicy fire crotch. No, just leave the spicy out. I think fire crotch works. There's probably got to be a red ale called fire crotch. I can't be the first person to say that. Uh, I have a pound of British Crystal 135, and I'm going to use that. But first, we're going to add in good old Turo. This is your go-to, apparently? Yeah, it's kind of the basis of all beers. Okay. It's just standard malt. It's like Pilsner or Turo is what you use malt. typically. All right, so I'm going to put in 12 pounds. Sure, why not? Not not that many. That's too many. Ah, eh, 14. What? Did we just say 12 is too many? No, I, I said 122,000. That's too many. That's what I accidentally typed. It's a lot. Okay, so we're starting with 14 pounds. That only gets us to 6.7%. Um, and we're going to now add our crystal. Can you imagine having to do this without the mathematics that the computer does? Nope. There's uh, so many um, like actual formulas. It's crazy. I have a book of them. I mean, it's it's, it's chemistry. You're, you're doing... It's more... I even think it's more chemistry than baking, maybe. But, like, to do it all by hand is just remarkable. 
it's funny because like you're going for specific like colors and stuff and there's ways to determine the colors there's ways to determine the original alcohol it's gonna be and it's I don't know what this is crystal 135 all right dark crystal I'm gonna see what half a pound does Oh, I like how that changed. <laughs> I don't that know what that means. Um, so this is the color. Um, so that's eight ounces. Screw it. We're going to do 12. Oh, sorry. I can, oh, really pretty. Look. It's still all reflection. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. That's dark. So that's a 12.5 SRM. That, I feel go. like I'm changing the name on it now. I'm calling it Vampire Food. Well, I wanted to do it because of Halloween. Vampire Food. Vampire Food. I like it. Vampi I'm, vampire you know, Breakfast. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna bump this down to 0.5, and then I'm gonna add some caramel 60, and we're gonna add a pound of caramel 60 and see, we'll see where that. Yeah, that's a color I want. 14. Yeah, vampire something. I'm still not quite there on the second. Vampire. All right, so we're at 7.4 percent. You know, I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add some Vienna. What is that going to do? Um, Vienna is like biscuity. We're going to look up what Vienna does so I don't get yelled at. So it, Vienna is a kiln dried barley malt that is darker than pale ale malt, but not quite as dark as Munich. Uh, it adds a golden color and toasty or biscuity. I was right. Okay. So it's toasty and biscuity. It's fun to be right, isn't it? It is fun to be right and not embarrass myself. So I'm going to add two pounds of that. All right. So we are in the range now at 8.3%. I am going to keep it there. So, yes. And our SRMs remain the same. All right, so now we're gonna do hops. All right, so we're gonna try to stick to American hops. I'm gonna use some Northern Brewer. Let's do it at the 60, say two ounces. All right, that got us a lot of the way there. And then let's do some Hops for flavor. What do I have? Broken stitches. Ooh, I like that. That's Turn a in. good one. Because I can see the, the label. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm good at doing gory shit. I know you are. You're a hell of an artist. I keep you in mind when I'm thinking about your labels. Um, Broken stitches, I think, is it. Yeah. I knew we'd get there. I'd be. So, I'm going to just look up, I don't fully remember what Centennial tastes like. I know, okay, so Northern Brewer is... I thought you said Centennial was the one that was like, kind of citrusy and kind of foresty and piney. Yeah, I'm going for foresty piney on this one. I think it's... What's the other super West Coast style IPA hop that like, tastes like you're licking a pine tree? That I know I don't um, like. Galaxy? Maybe. I, I don't know. Centennial, I feel like I've liked because I feel like they mix hops. that, they blend that with Citra. And I really like it. Is it Chinook or Simcoe? Yes. Simcoe. It's both of those. Yeah. Simcoe and Chinook are the two that I think when they do those in those triple IPAs that are super West Coast style, yeah. I think that if it, it feels like I'm drinking pine salt. Mm -hmm. And I really am not a fan of that. Okay. So Northern Brewer is like woody and minty. Ooh. So I think it would be perfect. No, it'll be great. Okay. I trust you. It's woody. I like the woodiness of Mint is like, it through me. It's not, it's not actually going to taste like mint. I mean, it's just a vibe. Um, and then Centennial. They're piney, citrus, and floral. Which, oh, my God. I can't yeah. believe I remembered that. Ten points. Ten points. All right. So we're going to use Centennial for our, like, flavoring hops at the ten-minute mark. Not ten ounces. Let's do two ounces at the ten-minute mark. So I'm going to just up that to three. I'm trying to be simple with my... It does not sound simple to me. It's very simple. Um, I'm going to add one ounce of Northern Brewer to that 10-minute addition, too, just to get it extra hoppy. You know what I kind of want to start doing when we do tastings? What? I want you to, like, tell me what we're tasting, and I want to, like, bake a pie to match. Beer and pie are gross. Depends on the beer. Depends on the pie. I'll, I'll, I will cook something to match. You're providing the, the beer. Like, you said the next one we're going to do is the milkshake. Yes. So for water, 
I'm just gonna use our tap water because I'm lazy. Didn't you used to use like the real filtery stuff? The RO water. Do you feel like it does make a difference? Um, it depends. I usually do it for styles that are like, you're really gonna notice it. But um, for this, it's gonna be so strong. I don't think it's gonna matter. Um, when I use the our LA water, I have to put in this um, tablet called a Camden tablet, and it basically gets rid of all the chlorine and chloramine in the water, because you know, we basically have pool water coming out of our faucet. All right, so um, we're gonna click our style, and it is, I'm just gonna use a, a dark strong ale because I don't think it's gonna show up as an imperial red, so this should get us there. All right, and then hitting auto, so we're gonna add 1.27 grams of gypsum, 1.27 grams of calcium chloride, and 1.27 grams of Epsom salt. I mean, I guess I really don't need to add anything <laughs> since we're gonna add everything at the same levels, but whatever. Um, Um, and I also need to change this so we don't have a sparge. So 1.6 for everything now, because there's no sparge. Alrighty, and for yeast, I'm just going to use, um, I was going to use like a California, actually, I'm going to use California ale yeast. You know, this style is made in California, may as well use a California ale yeast to be I still have that wine, that white wine yeast too. I don't know if that would be weird. We're not putting that in a beer. Okay. <laughs> she likes playing with weird shit. I figured I'd give her one more weird we shit could, thing. We could we could try one day, but not in a beer that I actually want to drink. We can make wine. I am so not interested in doing that. You gotta wait so long. I mean. All right, so I'm changing my fermentation temperature to 65. That's just what I like doing it. Um, I. Uh, I don't like a ton of esters or phenols in my beer, so I try to ferment them pretty cold. How would, how would I know what an ester or a phenol tastes like? It tastes like this. Be more specific. It's just that, like, kind of fruity, funky. Yeah. Oh, it, it, you know what a Belgian? That. You know what a Belgian tastes like? Yeah. Like, it's kind of like that. Oh, I like I like esters and phenols. It, it depends on what. Um, it's phenomenal. <laughs> That's a good one. It, uh, it depends on what kind of beer. Like, I like it in uh, Belgian styles, obviously. You should, you but... should make me your ester tester. <laughs> All right, so I'm adding California ale. I'm just going to put two packages because I'm going to make a hefty starter for this guy. And that actually brought our... ABV to 8.7 because it dropped our final gravity. It basically ferments out more than like whatever generic thing they were expecting. Sure. Oh, and this is what busted stitches is what it's called? Broken stitches. Broken stitches. Busted stitches sounds a little more aggressive. I think broken stitches is just kind of like you think about like the broken oozing blood. Yeah. I've Which definitely popped like, a lot of stitches in my life. Broken stitches. I like that. I really like that. I do too. Alright, so that is oh yeah, and mash profile 45 minute mash, fine. Um, it's gonna be hot in that room and I don't wanna be in there for longer than I have to be anyway, so screw it. <laughs> um, one, we can duct tape ice packs to ourselves. Basically, we can just, they, I have a, a thing that goes around the fermenters that runs glycol through it. We oh, 100% us. <laughs> you know that when I, when I was recording, I had to do that. Yeah. All right, so we are done. Cool. All right. And See you next time on Another episode of Sarah talks about beer, <laughs> and I pretend like I know stuff. So Jenny I can drink free beer. Stuff. Um, <laughs> you know a lot. You know more than you think you do. Um, thanks, Sarah. That was really nice. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe. I just started a Patreon because the YouTube membership thing takes a ton of money out of like what you guys are supporting me with so patreon's better and i've got a lot more tiers and i'm gonna do a monthly happy hour and i've got ad free stuff on there so i want to thank my newest patron zai friend thanks so much for your support thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you next time <laughs> hey guys welcome back uh so today we are going to i feel so weird not wearing a mask right now i don't know why um um, ambers and browns are different. I think browns typically use more, um, 
I'm gonna redo that because I have so much fucking hair in my so face. Guys, keep burping. Um. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that's what we said. We need to go to. <gasps> we don't have to. I've got like 40 do beers up there. They're all fancy. We um, need to go put them in the freezer. You're gonna go shit face. I'm really not. A pilsner and three taste tests. Love that. Cut that out. I'm gonna be shit face. A pilsner and three tasters. No, you're not. You're a professional. I am not a professional. I'm gonna get in trouble because I'm gonna use a British malt. Why is that bad? <laughs> Everyone's very uh, picky about what I use. All right, guys, I'm gonna use um, how much of this? 